BYD is the dominant player. It is what I've always called kind of the Toyota, uh, you know, for the, uh, the the traditional engine. You know, BYD is for for EV. Uh, it's going to sort of play uh, kind of the middle market. Uh, it'll be you know for its quality, the best bang for the buck, and uh, and that's going to put tremendous pressure on all global uh, EV makers. And and I don't think anyone's going to be able to reverse that advantage. And on that front, because obviously, you know, they've had great success in China. They've had great success elsewhere around the world. They've got vast amounts of expansion plans in terms of their production as well, whether it be, you know, Mexico or Brazil or everywhere else to try and enter into the U.S. market specifically. How do you think that's going to go, though? Because, you know, anyone investing now is, is pretty much making a bet that, one, they're going to see continued success in China and they're a little bit beaten down of late. All of the Chinese stocks are. So you could be like, OK, great, I'm going to invest now. But... It would be with the hope that we do see success for them and the other, some of the other players in the US. Do you think that the, that success is going to come? Or, or do you think that the deck's too fast stacked against them? Well, you know, I think it's going to take some time. So first of all, uh, without a doubt, right, there is a oversupply issue, right? There's just or a lot of money funding a lot of EV makers. We're not going to make it. So there's going to have to be uh, fierce competition to consolidation and, of course, the dominant leaders be it the BYDs, be it the Teslas, they are going to survive this fierce competition and enter the consolidation phase and exit that stronger and better. But that's the long run, right? Clearly, headwinds for BYD. Uh, I don't think the U.S. market is going to be open to it, uh, be available to it, and that's obviously one of the most important, the largest market. Again, so that's sort of a longer run thing, but in the short run, I think BYD is going to do just fine with the domestic market. It's going to make pushes into you know, the rest of Southeast Asia. We, we just heard that it's actually making great strides in Thailand. Uh, pushing into to Europe, Eastern Europe, and especially uh, Latin America. So I think there are plenty of markets for BOID to pursue growth before it needs to tackle the hardest problem, which is how do they become competitive in the U.S. market given the current environment? On the, on the domestic front, right, because, you know, what we've seen in the United States is, generally speaking, Tesla has just obliterated the, the competition, and, you know, whether it be because of people liking their cars, whether it be just because some of the other automakers in the US just weren't prepared for EV and they're, they're trying to play catch-up and it costs a lot of money. But in China, there's the weakening demand coming through, but more, more companies are jumping in as opposed to what you would normally expect to see some you know, severe consolidation in a, in a period of weakness you yeah. know, with Xiaomi and everyone else. So how do you envisage this shaking out or do you, do you think BYD, you know, if they wanted to take the, the Tesla approach and just, uh, actually, I've got a better way of phrasing this. Do you think that they'd be allowed to engage in a, a severe price war with their competitors in the Chinese market? Well, I got to say, since there is not a dominant state-owned enterprise who makes EV in China, generally Beijing's been pretty hands-off if it's sort of, you know, private citizen operated enterprise going after each other, right? You've seen that with the digital platforms, which, of course, none of them are state-owned enterprise, uh, go aggressively after each other. I think that'll be the same on the EV side. And uh, and so, yeah, I, I do expect the, 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 the competition phase to be fierce and the consolidation phase um, to, to be where, you know, the big players, like a BYD, and I actually think Xiaomi has a real chance as well. There'll be one or two survivors, and that's it. Can I just quickly ask you on that front, because I do want to talk about this, this WTO mess and I suppose the broader geopole as well, but just in terms of China EVs, for anyone watching right now, who do you think uh, are going to win? Because, you know, we, we, on this show we talk to, you know, Xpeng, and he has the, 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 the boss there had the same kind of notion that, you know, there's going to be very few players that are left standing and we're already starting to see consolidation and the like. But for anyone watching, who do you think those winners are going to be? Who, who's top of your list in terms of people can invest in them and have a reasonable expectation they're going to be around in the next five years. Yeah, so a few names. And again, it might actually be the uh, even smaller set, right? I think BYD, yeah. I think uh, G. Lee, uh, you know, I think Xiaomi is too early to tell, but their track record of producing an incredibly high quality and low cost product, you know, I, I think they got that going for them. Um, you know, some of the higher end products, uh, I don't think those are going to make it because, look, they you got you got to hit much higher production volume for this to make sense. 